we tour pretty much constantly all the time now, like like eight months out of the year, eight to nine months. Um, right now we've been on tour for six months straight, basically. It's like being home all the time. Sometimes it's really good, sometimes it's boring, sometimes it's action-packed. It's almost to the point where when you're on tour so much, you feel a little more normal on tour. Definitely puts a strain on the, on the home front, relationships, stability, all go by the wayside. It's East Coast tour, month long, I guess, and uh, with planes mistaken for stars and uh, no choice. Our dear sweet friends, no choice, just flew over this uh, yesterday morning from Wales. Um, I'm really excited that no choice is here because uh, we met them about a year ago. Uh, planes mistaken for stars are coming on the tour also, who I've met, but I don't really know, but I like. I've never really met those guys, and I've only heard a few of their songs, and I hear they're pretty crazy. Birmingham, Alabama. It's my brother's birth. My brother's birthday. No, it's my brother's wedding. Uh, free bar. We're getting drunk. Um, everybody's drinking. Uh, yeah, we're just having a good time, hanging out with the old people. There's a fountain of cheese, fountain and I call cheese. motherfuckers double dipping in that shit, man. You take the bread, right? You dip like that. Yeah, against me, my favorite band never. At the end of the day, my dad's band, no choice. My favorite band have always been No Choice. Uh, no, no, Against Me. My favorite band have always been Against Me. Because if you listen to a song called Mutiny on... Uh, it's called Mutiny, right? On the and Electronic Bay. That's the one, Mutiny on the Electronic Bay. That, um... What's the song? What's it called, like, <laughs> Tom, how's it going? Tell me. And the magazine spreads, a fashion model gas <laughs> maxin. Yeah, magazine spreads, a fashion model gas maxin head. It's tell me okay. What that song's about. It's oh, tell, tell it's about. What it It's all you? about models, you know, like being um, but like Cindy filmed. Crawford. Yeah, like Cindy Crawford <laughs> with with gas masks. Oh, I can't say gas. What's it mean? I sell all the merch. Uh, I go on all the tours. Um, do a little bit. Me and Tom basically uh, do the shirt designs and stuff like that, and I just end up basically handing everything related to merchandise. We have a new line of tutus for this tour, and it's gonna be very marvelous. They're pink with sparkles. <laughs> I spend my day trying to get in touch with venues and getting everything together for the show and basically kind of like do all the behind the scenes, you know, 
What's your job entail managing Nick, managing the oh, tour? Uh, what kind of stuff do you do? I do tax evasion. Uh, I try to wake him up even though I sleep through my own alarm. <laughs> my name is John Gerhard. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio, 513. And uh, I wrote for against me. That one's got ketchup all over too. I didn't do this one. Where's that ketchup all over? It's water, dude. No, it's, it's, it's water. Where's ketchup on there? I, I, it's, it's Give me the goddamn cable. It's sticky. We're having a dance party as a compromise instead of doing a instead of doing an encore because encores are kind of lame. So we're looking for the notorious B.I.G. Big Papa, and uh, hopefully people will get down to that because they weren't feeling Jodeci. Band called against Where me. Where are they from? The dome lights on, so we gotta go turn off the They're from Gainesville. Gainesville, Maryland? Is that Gainesville, Rock Florida. City? It's Gainesville, Florida. Gainesville, Florida. Are they on tour here? I'm familiar with yeah. that town. So Less than Jake told me this. Gainesville, Rock City. Less than Jake told you what?
Um, we're in uh, this Asbury Park, New Jersey, and there's about, uh, I'd say about 40 bands playing today, and I'd say about 36 of them are full of assholes. Um, it's about 5,000 kids here, it's 40 degrees. I lost my free meal ticket and had to eat from a lunch truck. Asbury Park is, is a very unique experience. Um, it's our second second time playing it. Go here to camp! Brand new. Yeah, we saw Brand New, it's amazing. And now I'm gonna see Taking Back Sunday. We love Taking Back. Against me, I think yeah, we, we watched them. Yes. I heard of them, not like heard their music. Um, I've only heard a few songs, but they're not bad. We just heard them, they're on the, they were on a um, anti-flag, like a CD that they put out. Your band's pulling up in fucking semi-trucks, you know, and like, and it's just ridiculous. It's a lot of fucking egos. and. I think it's gonna sound like shit up here. And uh, no one really cares about us, you know, here because we're not really a headlining act. Um, but I did steal some of Taking Back Sunday's beer, and that was pretty cool. But um, I did have a lot of fun, and we did, uh, I did lock, uh, it was Taking Back Sunday, I think. I, I, I locked Taking Back Sunday in their dressing room. Well, Story of the Year is playing right now, and, and Taking Back Sunday's after that. They were definitely in the dressing room. It was kind of hairy because of all the security around and stuff like that. But fold the door shut, had locked it shut. No way they're getting out of there. And I'm not sure if they got out. I assume they did. I'm sure sure that they figured out a way to get the padlock off the door. And uh, we went on Story of the Year's tour bus. Almost got kicked out. And, uh, <laughs> I was just getting yeah. some sleep. Oh, just let's, go. Out, bro. No. Yeah, let's go. Let's <laughs> go. Let's go. It's not a problem. I know. It's fucking weird. No, it's, it's not a problem. I thought we were hanging out. It's not your no, bag. Dude, give me my, it's my eyes. It's my bus, right? Is it a problem that it's my eyes and it's my bus? Turn the fucking camera. I don't know who he was in the band or anything like that, but. I, I, I guess at some point he realized that the, the people on the bus weren't necessarily anybody they knew and he tried to take the ice from me and then tried to take the drink from me and uh, was trying to throw us off the bus and, and I was uh, trying to reason with him and, and I guess at some point I, I mentioned that I was in you know a band that was on Fat Records or whatever which seemed like it was like some kind of trump card <laughs> like throwing that out there and he was like whoa okay okay sorry um yeah you know have a drink and I'm in a band we play on the same stage so. I don't know. <laughs> we're good then right okay. yeah yeah no don't worry yeah. it's cool man we're supposed to be here <laughs> where are we at? party bus is here <laughs> he drank some drinks I think we took some food, right? We took a pizza or something like that. And I had a lot of fun in that aspect. And I think that's what you have to do in situations like that, is that just just go in with the attitude of, uh, fuck it, <laughs> and, and, and try to fuck with people and have fun like that, you know? If, and if, if people are the type of people who suck, you know, they're obviously gonna take offense to you fucking with them in that way. If the people are cool people, then they'll get that it's a joke and, and then it's not been any big deal at all, you know, and hopefully they'll fuck with you back. Hey, this is Andrew for number one magazine hit radio. Uh, <laughs> I'm here with Boy Sets Fire. Our a &R guy from our label just told me yesterday, I had him on the phone and I was like, yo, Greg, we're playing with this band called Against Me who had this record reinventing Axl Rose because I knew that he produced little bits of that Chinese democracy record that will never come out. You know, the new Guns N' Roses record? And he actually told me that Axl Rose, through a friend, got a copy of that record and was furious, smashing it on the wall. Way to Cursing, go, guys. Having a voodoo cer ceremony. He's really like into that voodoo stuff for some reason. Yeah. And uh, making little puppets and was like, th he asked where they were from and people found out, like Florida. Yeah. And he was like, he was honestly like pinching needles into little you guys against better me watch puppets. Out, Axel Rose it's a true story. You.
jersey. Uh, we're lost. We took a couple wrong exits, but you know, we'll be fine. But it wasn't my fault. As long as we go, it's nobody's fault. It's just the way it goes. No, Brian's fine. Brian's fine. Weren't you navigating, Tom? No. Brian, I would get off. In, I gave in the up right. my navigating duties to him, clearly, with the map. Why don't, we, why don't we put on our ruby slippers and click our heels three times, see if we get magically whisked away and just fill it up in? I think they get a lot of they get a lot of shit, maybe too much shit for what you know what they choose to do. Like, you know, not every band wants to, you know I don't know. I kind of wish they were still playing in the basement personally, you know. But I don't you know condemn them for choosing to move on and and be bigger than that, you know. Yeah. And I think it's really silly just the way kids focus so heavily on that, you know, like on you know what against me is doing, you know. I mean they're just a band. <laughs> You know what? Fat records can suck my fat chubby. Because you know what? <laughs> Fuck you, fat records. I don't have anything personally against fat records or even know anyone that works there at all. It just it seems like like bands when they when they sign on to fat or epitaph, that they they seem to go in, in a more consumer direction, you know? Right now we're kind of in a weird position because, you know, it's kind of like what do we do next? And um we have the option of continuing on and staying with Fat, and uh, um, but then there's also it seems like lately there's just like a whirlwind of people approaching us and coming up to us, and specifically Universal Records being one of those. My name is Tom Mackay, um, and uh, I am the VP of A&R at Universal Records uh, in New York. Um, first time I actually heard of Against Me, um, my assistant uh, Maureen Kenny uh, was actually playing. Um, couple songs in her cubicle and I was walking to a meeting and I just kind of like stopped for a second I was like you know what is that you know initially going into stuff like this you you're like oh, fuck it and like these people are morons because they are they're obviously idiots they they don't know and they don't care they just see it as an opportunity to make money and but it just sometimes you feel like you're you're fucking drowning in it all I mean in my business you, you, you deal with bands all the time and songs all the time and CDs are coming in the mail left right and center and it's tough for those things to kind of stand out. Um, and this was just about as immediate as it gets. Making that decision to make the leap from a, a strong independent like Fat to a major label is, is a big risk. And I completely respect the fact that people are hesitant and um, I respect the fact that a band wants to, you know, stay true to the people that built them, you know, that, that, that bought their records and were there from day one. But, um, you know, I just look at the bigger picture. I mean, for every jawbreaker, there are bands that, that you know, took that step and made it. I mean, it's like, you know what we, what we like to deal with? It's not really about kind of genre of music. It's more about bands who, they already have an, they, they already know what they are. They already know where they're gonna go. They already know their fans. They, they, are, they are their own machine, you know what I mean? It's really easy to get really, really far away from what you're actually doing, which is being in a band and playing music. And it's really easy to get caught up in this world full of terms like target audience and market and um, booking agents and managers and fucking record labels and stuff like that. In a sense, like after a show tonight, which is, it's not even a show, it's not even a band, it's like a movement, you know what I mean? It's like you're there and you just kind of feel lucky to be there. I, I don't know, I, I, I'm, we're, we're literally in a position where we've had someone say, I'll give you a million dollars to make a record. And it's it's fucking crazy, it's insane. And it, and it is so far, so far from, from anything we ever wanted to be as a band or, or anything we ever wanted to stand for. They're an anarchist band, they're not, yeah. they shouldn't be corporations or no. big labels. They're getting paid to do something they really like a real lot and shit, if I could have a job where I made good money and toured the country and got to do something I really loved, I'd jump at it. So, totally. And I think Against Me is kind of holding on to their values in the scene because they are playing, they play the community center, yeah. which a lot of big bands wouldn't even think of doing after they kind of break. Ages. I don't know, like a, a lot of the kids that, that hear about them don't seem to be understanding the same message as when they were on like a smaller label or doing more intimate shows. Or I was very <laughs> disappointed when I found out they were playing with um, anti-flag. Very they play with anti-flag? Yeah, that was. Yeah. Dude, they're like my arch nemesis. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
are currently driving through New York City. It is 4 o'clock in the p.m. and we arrived here at 12.30. We have been driving around looking for parking for four hours now. Anyway, so we're all going crazy, we're all delirious, and um, I'm gonna kill someone. Soon enough, I don't I, I am quite a romantic, I'd say. I think that they're all genuinely sweet people. And uh, as far as my interest in having a business relationship, free drinks don't really change my thoughts about that. They just make me drunk. But they were, uh, they were very accommodating. We had a lot of fun. Got to see a lot of friends. I'm an asshole. Jen! What? It's okay, but you said you can make out with me. What? Yes. <laughs> wait, wait. So that was my goal for the night. Tom? Hi. Hi. Um, hey. Um, I don't think so. Because. <laughs> Why the you know fuck what? would I do that? What are we talking about here? <laughs> we're really not that bad, and we've met before. Oh, and we've met before. So I just fucking kiss you or something? What the I'm fuck are we talking about? We're at the motherfucking beauty bar. What are you doing here? Why did you just piss in the floor? Cuz I like to I like to urinate. I know everything about every band. Talk about against me. They are, they, they have, they reinvented Axl Rose. I'm on the top of a fucking roof in New York. My name is uh, Brigham Thomas Brednick. Basically, uh, I believe my the investment of me bringing me here is for mayhem. We're going to Boston. Well, it's 6.40 in the morning. We're going to Boston right now. We're going to go fucking wake everybody up and tell them it's time to go. Pull out. Break. Break, everybody. We've had it wrong for the past couple of days, and I've had an awesome time. Thank you for coming out. Not one more word.
cheers. I'll serve you. The penny of fucking double. Oh, I can drink it. It's still it. Oh. Come on! <laughs> Tequila. Tell me your name. Heather. No. What's the rules of qualified? Drink this case of wine. What's the living to Mr. Bud? Drink this other side. And I beat him in the drinking contest. Come on, check it. He's a big old pussy. Fuck, fuck off. Get fuck the off. Fuck off. Get out your nose. Oh, yeah. Because he just I'm... said you were done. This is Grand Rapids. Grand, actually, it's Granville, Michigan. We've been camped out here for two days. Living the high life. Went to the mall. A, this is a squat. Yeah. It's a squat outside of Grand Rapids. Yeah, there's a squat mall up the road where they do dollar flicks. There's a kid running the North projector. We're going to Chicago and we're going to go see a Cubs and Mets game. When we went to Chicago, we had uh, David from Virgin. Uh, fly out and he got us all tickets to go see the Cubs and the Mets play and uh, bought us all beers and hot dogs and stuff like that. The only thing that fucking sucked is that I sat right next to him and he was totally going for the let's talk business thing the whole time during the game so I didn't get to watch fucking anything. <laughs> I think the raw dog has really always existed. I don't think it came from anywhere. I think we just discovered it one day. Who is raw? I am raw. We are raw. Who is raw? Rod of the rod of the rod of the rod of the raw dog. 17%. You know how much higher that is? Dude, you are you think you're high now? Try 15% more higher. Try this way. He makes it all up himself, you know, uh, the theme song, and, yeah. Perfecto, perfecto. Mi amore, I see, I see, I see. He likes it, look at him.
thinking about Conversations on the surface Just keep on smiling Just keep on saying Today we met with Island, Def Jam, and then after that we met with Virgin, and uh, we've already met with Sire, Warner Brothers, and then of course there's the whole Universal thing. I, apparently I don't really remember it was singing songs with Tom McKay last night, and uh, I guess Cheers or something like that. Tom says I'm gonna be a star. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, he said, you know what? You know, he said that. You know what? He if, said if, you if, don't if, need the rest of the right. band. If William. He said, Fuck them all. Right. He said, I will, I, mean, I will cut you your own deal without right. any of them. Who needs Warren, really? Who needs Warren? I mean, a, a, drum, machine, a, a drum, drum machine. A drum machine will do it all. Or any other drummer. Exactly. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Okay, the label suits are going home. <laughs> I have to give it to them. They're hanging in there, and they're fucking going for it. They're trying. If they sign tomorrow, I wouldn't be surprised. But it wouldn't be for any... It wouldn't be for any negative connotations like, oh, yeah, those guys will sell out tomorrow. I think if they signed to a major, because they wanted to. And I think that they're going to stay who they are, and they're going to keep their politics straight, regardless. Like, you know, regardless of whether or not they're on a major label or on, you know, on their own label or on some other, you know, semi-independent label or whatever. Like, I really don't think it'll affect them much as people. You know, it's just a band doing something that they want to do. It shouldn't be so shocking to the kids, you know, the militant DIY kids, you know, which I consider myself to be one.
envisioned it. No, no, I envisioned. Wait, whose idea was no war in Iraq? Mine. It was his idea. 100%. I was the one who was like, Warren, go like this, and then we'll pull. That was go my like, idea. No, no, bullshit. I said that in Canada. Like, we'll make uh, Warren no, go like this, nice, and then we'll make nice, it totally white nice. on a bike shirt, oh, and we'll no, make it look like a Discharge no. shirt. Have you ever listened to Discharge? Do you even know who Discharge is? Sing a song. Well, we're doing an interview with Vanessa and Floyd, who both work at Fat. It doesn't matter to me. If you're a good band and you make good songs, then people will, that's what they respond to, is music. And it's almost insulting to kind of classify them as a punk kid or a hardcore kid or whatever. It's a label. It's like an oxymoron almost to like actually define somebody by what genre they want to respond to. So by doing that, it confuses me because I don't, I don't, I don't get it. So what? I major label or indie. So what? Like, what do you want to do? So what? If, so what? You want to be stagnant? Whatever. Do you want to make records forever? Yes. Do you want to make good ones? Yes. Then that's your fucking decision to make. It's not about like being on fat or universal or anything. It's bullshit. So I don't care where you go. Just don't fucking be a jerk and make stupid records. Don't be <laughs> full columns, you know? One game, one win. 
one game, one win. He just he was stronger. That's, that's all there is to it, man. He was a better man. One game, one win. At the end of the day, one game, one win. You would. But you lost. Okay. One game, one win. The Rutland from the <laughs> A lot of people at Fat Records were scared when all the major labels started talking against me, and I was concerned because we love them. We, we re, the whole label, everyone. There's not a lot of bands on this label that every employee loves, and they're one of the bands that just everyone's crazy about. So you know, people were scared, and I was a little concerned. But I don't know. Uh, I know them pretty well, and I've done some touring with them, and we're really good friends. And I, I thought they'd probably stay with us if we, you know gave him a pretty good offer and made him happy and you we're know. very much into free drinks and free dinner and stuff like that so we came out and took them for all they were worth when it came to that anybody that wants to buy me a drink is more than welcome to buy me a drink no matter how much distaste I have for their practices yeah it's just a bunch of bullshit basically I really don't I personally don't feel like uh, you know signing my life away one night in Germany at a bar with a lot of shots of Jägermeister and I don't really remember that night too well but Tom called me a few days later and said yeah we're gonna stick with your label so couldn't be happier. The other night when Planes got off tour Terry had the idea of hey let's go get pies and we'll throw pies at them and we're like it's so fucking British. Like, who the fuck would think of pies? So, today, of course, we were like, we're making fucking cream pies and we're gonna fucking get them.
Well, the plan was to try and get them. And uh, it went pear-shaped, didn't it? <laughs> it's not too late. And it's not too late, mate. So where do we get the cream from? I don't know. you got to one-up them somehow. you got to one-up them. Right. show tonight was, honestly, it was the hottest show we've ever had in this club. The kids were really into it. It was, uh, I don't know, just tons of pylons and it was a lot of fun. I had to kick everybody off stage. I thought it was great. Best show I've seen ever, <laughs> ever.
and there were like stink bombs going off and I think there was a riot about to start outside. People were throwing stuff and there's like all this alcohol. It fucking hits me in the heart like a fucking stick through a vampire, dude. <laughs> so, so I tried to tell the guys in, in uh, New York, but they would not listen. But you fuck, it's, fuck them. it's very important fuck, that fuck it up. music these days, music is so watered down. And when you hear a band that really fucking rocks you, that really fucking stabs you in the heart and you can't do anything about it, it's important. It's fucking important, man. <laughs> you pissed on my fucking leg. No way, dude. Somewhere else drinking while the show was going on. Maybe. Maybe. Okay, yeah. I was. I was. I missed the show. And I fucked up. I can't 